Hey guys, it's Jochen Haydn, and I'm back with the uh, Haydn versus Helsin uh, part two, version two. This is going to be the 8th of December combat replay. Um, so right now, um, I'm recording this before actually watching the replay. This is basically the status of my turn before I sent it to Helsin, right? I save it just before as a backup before I end the turn. And after I've been going through this, I realized that I made a few huge mistakes that could really really cause me a lot of problems as we're about to watch the replay so let me point out a few of them that i think helson might capitalize and really cause me issues so i kind of want to point them out to you now so that if and when it happens in the replay we're not stunned and shocked by it and i don't overreact because i've already kind of had a chance to look at this and say hey this is going to happen to me so i just need to kind of grin and bear it and, and deal with it because I don't have any, I, nothing I can do at this point. So the first one I'm going to point out is the fact that I've got my troops that landed at this hex here. Uh, I have them moving in towards a line drive towards towards cutting off the road from Alor Star, right? They're all in move mode right now. However, I neglected to put any kind of long range cap in this hex for this turn. So if Helson sees this and figures it out, He's going to probably try to bomb these guys and knock them out of their move mode, which is going to slow me down a lot. And that could be the difference between me getting out of the hex in time and not. So we'll see if he hits there. I would not be surprised if he does because he's smart. He's, he's, no, he's no idiot. And he probably has deduced what I'm trying to do here. So let's see if he does make that determination. So that's the first issue. The second issue here is basically as it pertains to Hong Kong. So I'm going to hit the number six uh, key on my keyboard. These are some of the patrol hexes that I set up initially. Uh, well, no, these are the patrol hexes as they exist for the turn that we're about to watch. Uh, previously, I had them going here and here and kind of making a, a circle here to, to try to intercept the British destroyers if they did leave Hong Kong. But that didn't happen. And we don't know for certain if his destroyers are still in Hong Kong or not. Uh, I was talking to Desert Wolf about there, and he is not convinced that they are. Now, I know we hit some ships in Hong Kong, and let's see if we can take a look at that combat report. Let's see if we can find it. Yeah, so these are the ships we hit in Hong Kong. You notice that there are no destroyers listed here. Initially, I thought maybe there could be, but we're not seeing any destroyers hit. And according to Helsin, no, not Helsin, according to Desert Wolf, 15 is the amount of ships that the British start with on turn one in the port. That's not counting the destroyers that are, like, sitting in a task force formed up. So, as far as I know, those destroyers are still unaccounted for. This number still reads 15. Now, there are a few options here. One, those are the 15 AKs that are still in Hong Kong and none of them are dead. And I didn't sink any of them. And there's only 15 and they're alive. And the destroyers are not in port. Option two. The destroyers were in port the whole time. We just didn't hit them. And we've sunk at least three, uh, three AKs with those bombs. So this total number of 15 are maybe 12 surviving AKs and three destroyers still in port. Which would be good. I would like that. Or option three, which is the worst case scenario for me, is that Helsin uh, got his destroyers out and went full speed down towards into the center of the South China Sea. And those destroyers have a max speed of 35 knots. So they can move 10 hexes on one movement pulse. So on the seventh, the December 7th, you only get one movement pulse per uh, period for naval. Normally you get two. So that means the max range that these guys could get to would be 10 hexes, which would put them about here somewhere in here okay now they're not spotted um and i would like to believe that the reason not spotted is because they're not there but anything can happen when it as it pertains to detection i have if you guys ever watch my my lodra campaign repeatedly i'm talking like three times lodra was able to warp carriers into Australia and I never saw them coming and he wrecked me okay that could very well happen here for all I know his destroyers are sitting right in here and I don't see them I think it's unlikely because there's a few things one I have the Chokai right here 
And on the Chokai, I have Dave's on Night Search with a range of four. Right? And I also have a Jake with a range of ten. They did not spot any British shipping. All right? That is not a guarantee. We also have... Uh, okay. I think at Patani, we have Mavis's that are on naval search at 20 hexes, which would put their range right at the edge over here, if you can see that. They didn't spot anything in here. Uh, additionally, we have the Mavises from Bangkok on 25 hex, which puts their uh, sighting range pretty deep out here into the South China Sea, and they did not spot any destroyers either. Again, it's not a guarantee at all, but those are things I have going for me that suggest that maybe the British destroyers are still in port. However, if they're not, and he does see these convoys here, right? They're, they're, they are detected. If he gets his destroyers into these convoys before the Chokai can form up with these guys and before these dudes can pick them up, see that? I have these guys moving on to patrol zones to try to help out. If his destroyers get in here, I stand to lose a lot of troops at sea. Because those three destroyers, you saw what they did to my naval guard unit going into Quang Chuan in the first iteration, right? I don't want to lose any troops at sea right now. And this is a this is a risk, and I don't think I adequately addressed it. So if these guys get bounced by three destroyers, we know where they came from and why. But boy, that would be bad luck for me. Okay, lastly, the other the, the biggest issue that I see going into this turn. Um, and this is the one that's going to hurt the most, I think, is my invasion of Kuching. I, in hindsight, took a look at what was going on down here, and I realized that I don't think I adequately um, addressed concerns with the British in Singapore. So our bombing raid on Singapore was pretty pathetic, right? We hit the uh, Prince of Wales and the... Here, let's take a look. Instead of me talking about it, let me show you. Uh, okay. Nope, that ain't it. Where is the... There we go. This is all we hit in Singapore with our bombing raid. Uh, the Stronghold, which is probably dead. The Repulse and the Prince of Wales, which I'm hoping are heavily mission killed. But there's no guarantee because system damage is system damage. And the Jupiter. All of the destroyers from the 4C, more or less... All the light cruisers, they're all intact. And if you look at Kuching, it's only 10 hexes away from Singapore. So it is very conceivable that Helsin full speeds ships from Singapore into my invasion task forces at Kuching. And quite honestly, I don't have anything there that could stop them. I emphasize keeping my heavy forces here at Kotobaru and Singora because if you take a look here, uh, we've got a ton of ships, okay? And they've still got stuff aboard. So I figured, hey, I need to protect these more because they've got more ships to lose. So if you were to go up here and do a YOLO move in the Kotobaru, um, that would be really bad, right? That would be horrible. And if especially if my naval forces did not react correctly or they, they missed the intercept and he got into my convoys, I got a lot of ships to lose there. But... It's not like I have an insignificant amount of ships at Kuching. Okay, I've got let's see, 19, 22, 25, 28 ships there. All right, these could all be dead. Here's what we got. Some patrol boats. All these ships here. And now, the troops are more or less off. Okay, that's a good thing. So we're just dealing with supply here. Um, also, there's another task force here, which has no escort at all because I pulled it off. And these guys will be unloaded early in the turn enough that I don't have to worry about losing the ships or losing the troops. The troops are ashore. It's just the supply that's at risk here. And then we have these two destroyers in this escort ship. But these guys, are, I don't think they're going to be enough to stop a bunch of heavy light cruisers and destroyers from Singapore and possibly even from Palembang. Heck, he could just come like, YOLO everything into here. He would probably die next turn, but he, I don't think... Lo no, Lodric. I don't think Helsin cares. And I have nothing here to stop these. So I've already done the math. We have about 130 
victory points worth of ships here. None of them are outright, like, irreplaceable. Maybe the destroyers, right, because the Japanese never get enough. These AKs, these AKLs, patrol boats, even this AP, I get plenty of those coming. I'm not... Losing them is not going to lose my campaign, but it just sucks because that's just a lot of ships to lose, and I did not plan for this correctly. So we will see what Helsin does. If I were him, I'd be going after this. He may be more risk averse and he may go, you know what? There's subs out here. Maybe the, the planes from Saigon are going to pick us off coming back in. I don't want to risk it. He, he could make that calculus and just full speed the heck out of here and leave us alone. But if he decides he wants to go for it, we're screwed. And this is my fault. This is not a misclick. This is not a, a, a game error. This is a tactical miscalculation that I made. And I had to eat it. So, I know this has gone on for about, what, 11 minutes we've been talking about this stuff. But these are some big errors that I made uh, setting up turn two. And I just want you to, to know what they are. So, when we see it happen, if we see these things happen, um, we're not really shocked by it. We just kind of understand that, hey, I screwed up. And I, and I know that this is a possibility. And we're just going to have to eat it. So, without further ado, I'm going to end this. And we're going to transition right into the combat replay. And I haven't seen it yet, so you're going to watch it live when I watch it. And we'll see what happens. Let's hope for the best, but expect the worst. Okay, guys, here we go. December 8th. Let's hope my dire predictions about the mistakes I made don't come true. But if they do, at least we know. Okay, well, we grabbed a base there in, in uh, whatchamacallit. What do you call it? Malaya. Okay, got some unloading. Not much to see here. Mostly supply coming ashore now. This is more unloading at Kotobaru. And Minato, same thing. And my heart's pounding right now. <laughs> what if he comes after? Look at, he's already got a task force uh, set up in Singapore. Man, my heart's pounding right now. This first naval movement phase is going to be very crucial here. Okay, more unloading. Lots of subs hanging off the coast there. All right, here we go. Oh, okay. Start with some subs. These are my patrol boats. This is ASW uh, patrol uh, north of Apari. I'm not expecting a whole lot here. These Type 95 depth charges are not very good. They're probably one of the worst depth charges in the game as far as accuracy, performance, damage, uh, you name it. So, uh, short term, we did scare off the old, uh, the old S36. That's fine. Oh, come on, man. I-124, swing and a miss on the Yusang, which is leaving Manila. Okay, wow, that's bold, man. <sighs> so the K-11, this is a Dutch sub, is coming into the Bay of Cotabaru, or whatever you want to call it. So these Type 95 Mod 2, um, there we go, we got a hit. The Type 95 Mod 2 depth charges are the better ones. Those are the ones you want to be using right now as the Japanese if you have them equipped. So we get one hit on a K-11, probably didn't do hardly anything to it. We dodge four torpedoes. Okay, 019. Oh, a Kuching. All right, well, that's not unexpected. <laughs> little Mark 14 action. This happened the first time through at Wake, and that's fine. Uh, we won't be hanging around here much longer uh, like I did last time. I ended up losing a bunch of ships here because this carriers inevitably came. So we're going to get what we can unloaded here, and we're going to get out of here. 
Okay, so far so good, guys. I have not seen any... Ooh, 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 ooh. Fire. Okay, K11's got a fire. Another hit. Another hit. Oh, this is good. Okay, all right. So the K11 gets hit. It says it started a fire, but it doesn't say it's on fire, so I doubt that it's actually on fire. Sometimes those messages are kind of just there for like some flavor, some flair, just to spice up your replay. I, it's probably okay, but he's probably going to want to think about leaving here now. Something just sank. No idea what that is. Okay. So it looks like this time around, the Triton is on the surface and firing at this guy. I guess they gave up on the torpedoes. Um, I'm sure we will lose this AKL due to this, but let's go ahead and let it play out. So 22 shell hits and it's on fire. However, a lot of those shell hits appear to have been a 50 cal machine gun, and I don't know how much damage those do. We got one, fire, uh, one hit on it in return. No idea what's going to happen with that. Hmm. Sighted by escort. I wonder what that escort is. Okay, well, all right. <laughs> I guess those 50 cals were enough to do the job. I gotta say, so far, I'm feeling okay about what's happening here. Okay. Guam. All right, this is uh, Minato. We're unloading more supply here. And a supply unloading at the non-base sex. And then Kuching. Looks like we're taking some damage from the single six-inch gun that Kuching's got. Oh, well. I mean, not much I can do about that. Okay, here we go. Landing at ADAC. This is one of my favorite bases in the... Um, in the Aleutian Islands, so uh, suffice it to say, it's going to be ours now. All right, so far this is really good, guys. No naval combat yet. Uh, that doesn't mean that there can't be more on, on the following turn. We're going to get some recon right now. And we'll see what we can see here. Okay, more unloading. Looks like we took another shell hit. A parry, that should be no big deal. Guam. Okay, okay, we get it. <clears throat> Man, that's stupid. They have, okay, so Kuching's literally got one six inch gun. And it is hitting us every single time. And that's a that's a that's like a light cruiser size gun, right? A six inch gun. It's about 155, 152, somewhere in there, millimeter gun, depending on what country you're from. And uh, these AKLs can take a lot of those. Cannot take a lot of those. Okay, I want to see some recon here. Where are the ships at? I guess we're not going to really get that right now until after the naval movement's complete, correct? Yeah. All right, so we got more Dutch subs off of Kotobaru. This is the K-13, it looks like. Oh, direct hit. That's always a good. Another hit. Oh, right. So, one critical hit 
and one probably not a superficial hit. Probably enough, though, to drive it away. Okay. I-121. Looks like we caught up to... Oh, guys. Oh. Check it out. There it is. You saw it, right? That's the Prince of Wales. It had some smoke coming out of it. It's definitely not dead. I didn't think it would be. But it's got system damage. So that's what we're seeing there. And this is Force Z's escorts. I was very concerned about these guys them especially. I thought these might come after us a Kuching, and so far it doesn't look like they are. I'm I'm good with this. Okay, now we're back to the the Triton is electing not to engage the ship because he said, hey, it's already burning, so why would I waste the time? Okay, here we go. Air operations. We'll start with some scouting and spotting. Yeah, see all these blue um, things? We can't trust them. Allied AKL. Ooh, did you see that? Three ships. Nice. Cool. All right. Well, now we see what's going on here. Well, that's great. We're already starting off with bad weather everywhere. Perfect. So right off the bat, we're going to do some sweeps over Clark. Just kind of seeing what's there. Okay. Uh, so one of these is a sweep, and the rest of these are going to be... Um, what the heck is that? Do you see the ships in Kotobaru? What the heck is that? Huh. Anyway. Um, yeah, the rest of these are uh, long-range cap. All right, guys. My, my, um, my pucker factor for this turn has already dropped substantially. The, the biggest threat that I thought we had this turn has subsided. Okay, a good bombing raid on Naru. We may have wiped out the whole garrison here. Okay, this is going to be a bombing raid on Kotobaru. No airfield attack. I need to preserve the airfield. All I'm trying to do is disrupt the actual uh, troops on the ground. Okay. Okay, this is a... Wow, that is a really crappy... Look at this. Wow. That was uninspiring. Look at look how uncoordinated this raid came in. One Betty destroyed by Flak. Uh, decent hits on the base. Okay. Severe storms in the hex, which is going to reduce accuracy, but we still get some hits. And I'm not so much concerned about killing the troops so much as knocking these guys out of a move mode. So you're going to see this. You're going to see these sallies kind of broken up into a bunch of small raids. And all we're trying to do is put damage on, on stuff. I sure hope the rest of my bombers make... There we go. Okay. That's what I'm looking for right here. So, so we're getting a lot of good hits on the base. However, um, airbase supply hits are especially important to me. Because we need to start uh, bleeding these guys dry with supply. There's no aircraft on the field, so he's already pulled them out. Okay. Got some Nels coming in, hopefully with some torpedoes. Eh, a dud. Okay, one hit. 
that should be enough to sink that. Oh, well, maybe not. All right, so swinging a miss on the nails on that one. I don't know how they're hitting, how they're not hitting stationary ships, but. I can't believe how uncoordinated these raids are, are right now. Again, the weather not doing us any favors. Look at that. There's no cap up anywhere. He's doing a straight Sarabin on us, guys. Or he's going to keep him down and wait wait for a day when we let up on our sweeps and stuff. And he's going to slam us with the cap trap. I know what he's going to do. Well, I know what his MO is. I don't know what he's actually going to do. Okay, clear sky over Hong Kong at least. Alright, so what we're just trying to do here is put damage on the airbase to keep them from building up any more forts until my troops get in town. Okay, raid coming into Georgetown. Again, heavy... Um, mm, okay. There's heavy weather at these bases today. But we found there's more aircraft on the ground. There's either probably some of the ones that he couldn't get out last time. And now I'm hitting uh, Wen Chao. This is an air base attack. Again, the goal here is to keep him from building forts. Gosh, I can't believe we dodged that bullet, guys. Um, it's too late now. If he was going to send hit. Look at that. You see this over here? Look at that. Sneaky, sneaky. I see his destroyers. They're over here. We dodged the bullet, guys. Big time. Okay, we're just hitting Hong Kong again. Trying to keep that base uh, destroyed. Look at that. 84 Sallies. I want to I want to obliterate these troops here. I want them to be so disrupted there's no way they can fight back. My favorite aircraft that we got hit the winch out. Okay, these are Dutch. These are Dutch B-10 bombers coming in. If they hit us, they hit us. Not much I can do about it. Yep, there it is. I kind of expected this. It's not. Watch their altitude, guys. It's going to be 100 feet. Watch. You ready? Oh, a thousand feet. So this is low naval. I uh, okay. Uh, that's okay. All right. So we're gonna get the full brunt of this. Um, this was a, a possibility. He probably brought a lot of aircraft into Sinkawang for this purpose. All right. This is this is not great, but it's not. The worst thing ever. I can take these losses. Alright. So the Build a Beast did pretty good here. They grabbed um, the Hakusa Maru. The, the Ryoyo Maru is hit bad. That sank. These will probably sink, knowing what I know about Japanese damage control. Again, I'm okay with this. These are acceptable losses. Oh, what a great use of a torpedo, guys. Seriously. Well done. <laughs> well, 
We got it. Great job, guys. Ooh, please be the Boise. Nope. I I think he's he's playing this safe right now. Okay, so the Melbon is definitely dead. Some really bad coordination. Really bad coordination for the flights today. I'm, gu I'm guessing the weather had something to do with this. Two allied ships moving northwest. That's leaving Rangoon. This is really grand. Oh, no. This is a naval attack. There they are. Oh, we dodged a bullet on this one, huh? It's unlikely. So we're only carrying bombs right now. It's unlikely that we're going to hit these guys. Okay. So that was a swing and a miss. What is this? An AKL. And we're wasting torpedoes on it. Alright, well, we wasted three torpedoes in an AKL. That's great. Uh, more Bettys are going to try again on these guys. I don't think we're going to hit them. It's just so hard to hit these guys with bombs. Nope. Okay, well, that was a uh, very uninspiring air phase today, but, you know, that's okay. Well, it looks like a couple of his uh, minesweepers have survived. It's kind of a pain in the butt. Well, well, well. What do we have here? A minefield at a party? Hmm. How would they get those in there? All right. Anyway, back to work. Um, we are landing at Rabal now. Okay. So the Harukaze and the Misaki Maru both take a shell hit, presumably from the six-inch gun.
kind of a lot of casualties here. That that sucks. That's a lot of non-combat. But we're bringing in the whole shebang. Okay. We dodged some bullets today. We dodged some huge bullets today. I really expected Helsa to be a little more aggressive. All right, so this is our attack at Minato. This should go quite fine. Retreat, retreat, excellent. Now we're gonna pursue, nice. That's exactly what I wanted to happen. So this time around, I used less force on these guys, right? So we didn't kill the units outright, which allowed my units to pursue. Namely the, the, the SNLF and the 2nd Take Regiment. Right into Sedate. So next turn we should be able to hopefully finish them off. Okay. We just grabbed the Pari. Great job, guys. Literally nobody there. This should be uh, open and shut. Thing of Kutabaru. Ah! We don't want surrenders. Oh! Never mind. That is so weird. Now they pursue. It must be if the last unit is destroyed or surrenders is when they don't pursue. Anyway, um, we took him out. Destroyed one, blew two out, and we are pursuing right behind him. Excellent. Kuching. No, I need this to happen. This this better happen. Let's go. You ready? We need to take we must take it this turn. Yes. Okay. Great. I brought enough in here to do this. Excellent. And Guam. Guam should be easy peasy. Greetings, everybody. Mm. How's tricks? How's this tricks? This is Orphan Anne <laughs> from Radio Tokyo saying hello to all of her dog faces and boneheads Bone wandering heads. the Pacific Islands. Before we start the music, the Japanese High Command announced today that the ever-victorious forces of the Japanese Empire have captured Guam. Guam. I've been to Guam before in the Air Force. I love Guam. That is paradise. I love Guam. Okay. Um, we have an Allied bombardment attack on our troops landing ashore. All I got to say is good luck. You see that? <laughs> Rip. They don't stand a chance. Guys, I don't know how Helsin didn't take this bait. Uh, well, it wasn't bait. I don't know why he didn't go after us at Kuching. He could have wiped us out. But he's playing it safe. You know, and that's that's fine. Man, <laughs> could have been bad. These are just some units I'm transferring around. <sighs> Man, I'm so relieved. I am so relieved. All that 
10 minutes I spent before this turn started talking about all the things I jacked up uh, fortunately did not come to fruition for us. So let's go ahead and take a look at what all occurred. Oh, man. Well, we dodged a bullet on this one, huh? All that talking I was doing about about this and that, and I, I totally screwed it up. I, I didn't, well, I did screw it up, but Helson did not capitalize on it. Lucky me, right? All right, we'll start with aircraft losses a turn. Uh, five for us, four for the Allies. We lost a couple Bettys, a couple Zeros. He lost a couple Blenums. I got us a Pete, <laughs> a, a Lodestar for him, and a, another Buffalo there on the ground. Uh, top pilots. One wounded and one KIA pilot. So let's take a look at the wounded pilot and see how he's going to do. I think we need it on, on group, right? So wounded. Looks like we're going to get... Oh, man, that's the commander of the squadron. Look at that. Commander Matsumoto. Um... Oh, I'm, no, we're not going to transfer. Okay, he's going back to his squadron, looks like that, uh, by uh, by the, sometime this month. So, good for us. We don't want to lose that guy. Looking at the army loss points, this is exactly what I want to be seeing. Uh, the Allies are up to 209. We're still at 1. Ship sunk last turn. Uh, we did take some losses, but I'm way okay with this. Uh, I was expecting 130 plus uh, ship loss points here, and we're down to 14. I can I can handle that. So Fushimi, um, that was sunk near Kuching, and so was the Ryoyo Maru. This one wasn't particularly important. And this one point, Hitora Maru, not that important either. So that's okay with that. Looks like perhaps two additional submarines from his from Manila have sunk. And then we also shot up the Lepus and the Bellatrix with the mini Kido Butai, wasting their 18 inch torpedoes on those. Uh, okay, so for the turn, we went up 438 points. It sounds like a lot, but it's very normal for the first few turns. You get a lot of points right off the bat. Uh, his win ratio is down to 5.153. Okay. Get a good look at it. Now let's fire up the old uh, combat reporter. Uh, see, there we go. And we'll take a look at what we got for this turn. So, sea engagements. We had, obviously, the Triton causing all kinds of trouble for us. Uh, doing some damage to the Higar Higari Maru. Also, okay, that was the same one. Oh! Uh, our I-121 caught up to the Prince of Wales right here. Uh, it, just like I guessed, it is not dead. It's damaged. We saw smoke coming from it. But unfortunately, the I-121 was not able to get any torpedoes into it. Dang it. Ah. All right. I-124 missed a shot at, um, at Lubang. And then his AM is doing some ASW. And unfortunately, it looks like they cleared out a bunch of my mines that I laid at Lubang as well. We had some Dutch subs here at Kuching. They didn't do anything. At Kotobaru, we hit the K-11. And it looks like we also hit the K-13. We scared off the S-36 near Kalayan. And we laid some mine. We found some mines... At Apari. So I have a lot of DMSs, which are destroyer minesweepers in that task force. So they swept them away. At least I think they did. I hope they did. Okay. So ground combat. Uh, we landed at Rabal. We took Kuching. We took Kotobaru. We took Gu Guam and Apari. And this time we had some pursuing units, right? Uh, fortunately, all the pursuits worked as advertised this particular time around. I don't know what's going on with that. Okay, we landed at Rabal. As you can see here, took a lot of losses doing it. 
Uh, and we also landed at ADAC in the Aleutians. So air, air attacks this turn were not very good. We had a lot of uncoordinated attacks at Clark Field, for example. Um, the bombers were not coordinated at all. Coming in in piecemeal. We did do some damage to the base, which is good. And we we're hitting the supply. But there are no aircraft on the ground whatsoever. Uh, I cannot find any aircraft at Clark. So he's flown them away. Which means those B-17s got away too, which is kind of a pain. 8th Indian Brigade. Let's see here. Uh, that's Kotobaru. You guys can look at the list. And you saw the replays. I don't see anything particularly noteworthy to call out this turn. Uh, I guess other than maybe this. Where is it at? Right here. We found the British. At least two of the British destroyers are here at Touraine. He's hunting ships, but he missed them. Because he has no naval search up here. Our Betty's tried repeatedly, but all we're carrying are bombs right now, so they didn't get it done. It is what it is. It's not the end of the world. We'll move on from that. But at least I know where they're at, and everything that I need to have safe is safe. We'll look at it a little bit more. Stick it. Let's take a look. Radio transmissions near Anking. So he's forming up right here. Not Anking. It's south of Sion. He's forming up troops here. That put up a defense. This is times three terrain. Uh, we got radio calls near Yan'an. Something in uh, Sakhalin. Langsa. Radio transmissions near uh, Trivandrum. Uh, I'm wondering if he's just pulling ships in and out or moving ships around here. It's hard to say. There's a lot of uh, naval traffic in this area near Colombo early in the campaign for the Allies. As they get their act together. And then last but not least, Sir Baez got some activity. That's very normal. Okay, for the ops report, it's not that exciting this turn. So we'll just go through a couple quick things. For Japanese, here's a list of our accomplishments this turn. Monado, Apare, Kotobaru, Kuching, and Guam. This is all standard stuff. And unknown. Um, one thing I do want to point out to you here is that I'm currently pulling... The Yokosuka first SNLF or the Yokosuka, sorry. Out of two Gugurao, there's no point for them being there any longer on the Philippines because we've got troops coming in right behind them. So we'll just uh, pull these guys back to, to uh, Formosa and come up with another plan for them and how to use them. Okay, the Fushimi Maru sunk, we already know about that. And uh, take a look here. I just laid mines at Wake. Because I just wanted to dissuade submarines from coming in here any bit more. Any bit more. So we dropped a bunch of mines here. 60's worth. And I also have two patrol boats and an ACM coming up here to tend these mines. At Wake. And I might add more, more mines here just to make this a little more of a deterrent for anybody coming in here. Okay. As of this moment, our... Our patrol planes are not uh, finding anything out here, but the American carriers could be there. So we're not going to stick around much longer to find out. I am going to get this ship out, and I'm going to leave this damaged AKL in place to unload whatever it can for supply. But this guy's out of here. And then this is the invasion task force here. I'm pulling it back right now as well, just to get it out of the way. In case the Americans do come in with carriers. I don't want to lose a bunch of ships uh, at this point. Okay, that's it for Combat Reporter. Let's just start going around the world. Okay, in China, um, everything's going pretty good. Uh, we did get into these two hexes here because of the bombing slowed these guys down. So we can start attacking them here. We are getting some damage on to Wenchow, but not a lot. We're getting a lot more damage on Hong Kong, which is good. And it looks like a Vanguard force has gotten into Hong Kong, but it got here a little bit faster than the infantry units behind it. So these guys are just going to chill for a little bit. We're not in any rush. Well, we're in a rush, but we're not going to attack next turn with this. We're just going to wait until the main body shows up, which is approximately almost 900 assault value. You have two divisions the army headquarters and another artillery unit involved here. 
So in about two turns, we'll start our attack on Hong Kong. I'm going to give it one more uh, bombing turn uh, on the... Well, actually, you know what? I don't think we need to keep hitting Hong Kong's uh, facilities much more. I think I'm going to start targeting the troops next turn to start getting some disruption on there because the more disruption they have, the better the chances we have of taking this in one turn. So I think I'm going to switch over to hammering uh, the troops at Hong Kong next turn. Uh, let's see here. We do see a lot of retreat overall, right? This unit is trying to block a rail line here, so I'm going to move something in here to help defend that. We did get into this hex, so we can hopefully do some damage to these guys next turn. Now, look at this. So there were two units at Kwai Te, right? But he moved one into this hex, but it's weird. There's no hex sides on this one. I don't really know. I've never seen this before where there are two units in the same hex of the opposing side. And there's no hex sides uh, listed. And if I look on the unit, um, I st I'm stopping one to attack, right? The other one can keep going to Kwai Te. I don't really understand what's going on here. Um, I'm guessing this might be a mechanic where the units both go into the hex at the same time, so then nobody owns it. That's got that's my guess. We both moved into the same hex at the same time, so there's no hex side control. There's no nothing. Uh, that's all I can think of here. Uh, but I, I think this is going to backfire on them because this one unit can stop an attack and the other one can move on. So we'll wipe these guys out easier than if he was here at Kwai Te and they were together. So whatever. Uh, other than that, there's really not much to discuss in China quite yet. We're just, uh, you know, just trying to get across the river and try to do stuff. And we'll, we'll do what we do. So we do see there are some ships here in Hong Kong and some, at least one in port. Other ones seem to be missing. And we have at least two destroyers are being attacked in this hex. So from here to there was 14 hexes. So my theory was... Hmm. I believe my theory was correct. I do not believe that the destroyers left port last turn. I think he full sped into here... Um, from Hong Kong on this turn. So they were in port. We didn't hit them. They got out. Now, we got very lucky he has no naval search because check this out. These guys are just driving down the coastline towards Saigon. I'm going to immediately do an about face and get him back. These guys are in here. I'm spending them right now. So we're going to get these guys to go right back to Sama. Emergency fast. Uh, no unload. Auto disband, which I know they won't during the turn. They'll do it afterwards. That's fine. And then we will start vectoring over all available ships uh, into blocking positions around Camran Bay and also try to intercept these guys while we can. Nothing to talk about in Southeast Asia yet. We're just on the move. I'm, I'm getting all these units organized and, on, on, and uh, moving here. Uh, we're going to use Chiang Mai as our main base for the air war over Rangoon as far, at least as it pertains to the fighter sweeps and the, and the like. Bombers will come out of Bangkok. So I'm currently moving aviation support into here and here and pulling it out of all these bases here because we don't need it there anymore. Okay? In the, uh, down here, we've got these guys, which will soon be the 143rd Infantry Regiment. Ooh, these guys aren't moving. That's not good. Let's get these guys on the move. Wait, is nobody moving? Man, nobody was moving. Everybody move, come on. Now can I? Uh, whatever. Okay, <laughs> I can deal with this later. These guys are going to move and take Victoria Point, which should secure our rail line, more or less, in this area. Um. Okay. Uh. So we had a lot of Dutch subs in here in along the coast of Malay, but we dealt with them with ASW. And our troops did not get bombed, and they are well on their way. They will be into this hex next turn. 
no matter what. Even if they went into combat mode, they'd still get there, which is going to block all the troops in Alor Star from getting down the road. And also, it appears his troops from Georgetown are moving into this hex too to try to stop us, but they won't get there in time. But we'll get them all kind of trapped in here too, which will make taking Georgetown even easier. And then we can just start really working our way down the coast do some Blitzkrieg. Because as you see here, we've got quite a bit of troops now on the move as well into Alor Star, and they'll keep coming down. So the armor is going to be out front with the infantry following suit behind. And we've got about 400 some odd troops, 400 some odd assault value worth of troops coming in here. A little bit more to unload, but that's fine. Uh, Patani doesn't have much of anything at all. It's just basically, you know, uh, housekeeping troops. We did have a successful attack at Kurobaru, and our units did actually uh, follow, see? So this is great. We, we made up a lot of ground right now going into pursuit mode with a lot of these units, as you can see. Let me see if I can show you a couple more. So three units already have a day's, a day's march ahead down to here, which is not going to give these guys enough time to build up their defenses in this jungle rough. They won't be able to get fortifications, really, and we'll be there soon. And the rest of the main body will be behind it, and we'll continue to push hard for Temelo. It does not appear he's trying to, to uh, build up too much in Temelo, which is fine with me because this is a mountainous, um, it's another, I'm sorry, not a mountain, but jungle rough here. And the more of these bases I can control that he doesn't have a lot of troops in, the better because it's times three. Now, I do understand that a lot of troops will get into Singapore, but you know what? It is what it is. When I hit Singapore, we're going to have five or six divisions hitting it at the same time. And they're going to shock attack and do huge damage to that place. We'll probably take a lot of losses, but whatever. We need this base. But there we go. That's Everything in Malaya is going the way I wanted to right now. No complaints. Uh, and as I mentioned at the beginning of our video, we dodged a huge bullet here at Kuching, right? Force C is heading south towards either out through the Merak Gap or maybe through Surabaya and down to Australia. I don't know where he's going yet. I've got subs in pursuit, as you can see. I've got other subs in the uh, Strait of Malacca just to dissuade any additional shipping from going up this way. But he may have already gotten some out. I don't know. So we'll set up subs down here and subs up in here and we'll see what we get. So I don't know where the Boise and the Houston went off to. Kido Butai is currently here. Um, I may want to detour down this way once because there is a chance that he's actually hanging out in Cebu and Eolio. Eolio? Eolio? Either that or he's getting crazy and he's going to try to send his guys this way, but I doubt it. So either he left this turn and he's kind of over here and we just didn't see him, or he's still hanging out in the port. So I think I want Kido Butai to come over here for one turn, hit Elo, 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 and Cebu, and just confirm that they're not still in port because we're actually not sighted here. Look at this. No spotting. So we have a chance to actually get in here. He doesn't know where Kido Butai went to right now. So we may, he may be just waiting in here for everything to blow by. I think that's what he's doing. So I am going to try it. We got nothing to lose. We'll, just, we'll do just some port strikes on Cebu and Elo Elo and see what we get. And in the meantime, I'll move Kido Butai Light over to here just in case. And we'll, we'll pick off the rest of this stuff. Monado went down without a hitch. We own the base. It's already a size 3 airfield. And I have an uh, both the naval uh fleet thing and the air flotilla so i can start moving in my my betty bombers into this area to give me some better vision and to give me some naval strike capability here with torpedoes we can also move the fighters from babel in here as well uh yep we are in Rival with a huge force so I need to be very careful next turn. I think I'm only going to use these two infantry regiments to attack. And we're going to set this recon regiment to pursuit. And probably 
the this SNLF company as well. Just to keep the keep the pace on. No, that's probably not enough force. What can we send? Ah, we'll send the Cano debt. They can go with this too. Just to just to keep pursuing these guys until we can kill them. They're gonna probably get blown out next turn, take heavy losses, and if we can follow them into this hex, we can finish them off there, and that'll be the end of these guys. We should be landing on Naru next turn. Uh, I'm going straight for ta I'm straight for I'm going straight for the Gilbert Islands right now. I want to start grabbing these things before he does. Granted, it's not gonna be they won't mean much if I don't have anything on here. But it's just one place where he can't sneak seaplanes or subs or any kind of tenders in here and get sneaky with us. So I want to grab these dot bases right now and it will back cap to Tarawa because I don't really need Tarawa at the moment. Okay. Yeah, we already talked about Wake. We lost the ship there and we have another one that's on fire. I'm going to leave it to unload. This guy I'm going to pull out. We laid mines here. Mine sweepers on the mine layers on its way out. These guys are on their way out, so we will avoid major losses from an airstrike. And at some point, I need to extract this infantry regiment. I just got to figure out how to do it. I'll figure it out. Can't do it without some sort of cover, though, because the carriers could show up at any time and destroy the whole thing when they're, when they're loading up. And then lastly... We're ashore at ADAC. So what we can do is actually cancel unloading. Because what I'm going to do is start loading up uh, a unit here. Probably this guy. And start bouncing him around all the islands. To start grabbing everything we can. All the way up to uh, Dutch. Because I definitely don't want to mess with that right now. Not unless we can suppress it better. But yeah, we'll start grabbing all these bases just to have them. All right, that's it for the turn. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. It was kind of quiet, but I'm fine with quiet. Uh, the takeaway here is that Helson is going straight full Robin on everything. He's pull he's not engaging us. He's pulling everything back. He's getting his ships out. He's declining to take the bait. Uh, and that's bad for us because we're not going to get a lot of engagements. We're not going to get a lot of points right off the bat because he's not cr climbing up to meet us. But it's good because we get to dictate the pace. And it means we can grab our early objectives right away without having to stop and fight constantly because he's not putting up a fight. If he wants to pile up into other places later on, so be it. We'll meet him there when it's time. But I need to capture all this stuff right now. And if he doesn't want to fight for it, that's fine. We'll deal with him later on when... When we have this all consolidated and we can put together a, a better offensive plan once we made our initial goals, right? Does that make sense? So it's a good thing and a bad thing. I think maybe more net positive than negative, though. Because if I'm not looking to go for the auto victory necessarily this campaign right off the bat, I don't need every single point I can get. That'd be a bigger concern if I was trying to AV this guy like that. That was my main goal. Uh, I would need to be engaging him. I would need to be shooting down planes. I should have hit Pearl Harbor to sink more ships there. You name it, I should have done it all. But that's not my intent for this campaign. My intent is to secure all the stuff I need to secure as quickly as possible, expand where I want to expand, and build myself a really nice defensible bubble. Uh, with uh, Way past the fringes of what Jap Japan actually did, I'm not going to play it super historical because that didn't work for them, right? I need to go further, and I will go further. But uh, I don't want to tell you exactly which directions I'm going yet. You'll have to wait and see. Uh, I guess I'll catch you guys on the next one. Glad we didn't die.